Hey guys, Spiderbot here, and welcome to our compilation guide for Pop Goes the Weasel, the achievement slash Easter egg on Mob of the Dead, Black Ops 2 Zombies DLC. Now, there are a couple of prerequisites that you're going to need to have completed before progressing with this Easter egg. First, you must have built the airplane on the roof of Alcatraz. Second, you must have fed the beast three times and unlocked hell's retriever we're not going to cover individual builds for these items uh, we will be producing separate videos for those that we will link you to once they're up on our channel from this video also we've only been able to verify the completion of the achievement and easter egg in four player co-op as well as verifying that uh, we can't complete it on solo. Not sure about two or three player, haven't seen much information about that, but it may be possible so long as one of the characters is the weasel. All right, first step here, we gotta take a plane ride over to Golden Gate Bridge. The reason we have to do this in co-op is that you have to take a trip, at least one trip to the Golden Gate Bridge in order to unlock the blue skulls that we're going to retrieve using Hell's Retriever. Once you're back to Alcatraz, there are five of these skulls that you need to retrieve using the Tomahawk. Okay, first skull location, we're gonna start off on the docks and it's where you can see the PhD flopper and uh, the mule kick machines. Treyarch's trolling us good there, and it's on one of the posts, on top of one of the posts, uh, you can see it first in uh, while you're in the afterlife, and then as we collect it using Hell's Retriever. The second is over by the gondola, now you can get this or obtain this skull either by down by Jug, you, uh, you have to get it just right if you're down by Jug and looking up at the light post. Uh, otherwise, if you're in the gondola, it's best on the way down and if you're looking out the back of the gondola to uh, snap it up with the tomahawk that way. Third skull location is in one of the jail cells directly across from the library where you spawn in at the start of the game. And uh, there is a, a couple of skulls, two skulls on the shelf, one skull on a, a cabinet, and the blue uh, hidden skull, afterlife skull, is actually on top of the toilet. And uh, there we go. Fourth location is outside of the window in the warden's office. Now, it looks like it's probably a little too far away, but uh, you'll get it. I don't even think you have to charge your tomahawk. I don't think that affects distance, uh, so you should be able to get it no problem. And that is skull number four. The fifth and final skull location is on the roof. You go on, up on the roof where you built the plane over on the left hand side. And it's just outside that playable area on that uh, other part of the roof that's jutting out. And there is skull number five. Now, once you've retrieved all five skulls, go back into the warden's office and you might have to wait a second or two, but check out the desk. The desk just lights up on fire and a weapon appears for you. It's the Blundergat. It's a free Blundergat. Now you do, in fact, have to pick up that Blundergat off the table in order to progress in this Easter egg. Okay guys, the next thing you're going to want to do is collect two spoons. Now you don't necessarily have to do this after you get the Blundergat. You can do it before, before the skulls. But we're just outside the warden's office and there's a jail cell with a movie poster. We're going to use our Hell's Retriever to get the movie poster. That opens up the afterlife symbol. And now we can go into afterlife and there is a tunnel in behind that row of cells that we can now go in. And you couldn't go in it before the poster. Right there in that hole, right beside the hole in the ground there and the skull, you see that spoon? You zap the spoon and the, z and the spoon disappears and you hear uh, the laugh from the old mystery box. The second spoon is in the cafeteria. This one you don't have to zap while you're in the afterlife. You go to the back of the cafeteria and right there on the table on the left hand side is the second spoon. You grab that and you should be good to go with the numbers. The numbers should now be flickering on uh, the number panel and we're gonna go check that out right now. Okay, the next step is setting the prisoner numbers on the number pad that's in the Citadel Towers where we got one of the plane parts. You had to enter the three digit number that lowered the lift. You opened the door and uh, there was a part for the plane. The only problem is you have had to actually travel to the Golden Gate Bridge a total of three times. 
Uh, and the way you know that the number pad is ready to take the numbers of the prisoners is it's going to be shuffling numbers. You can hear it when you go into that area. You can hear the number pad going tick, 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 and the numbers are shifting. That's when it's ready to accept the codes for the prisoners. If it's not ready, then you either have not picked up that Blundergat off the warden's desk, or you have not traveled to the Golden Gate Bridge a total of three times. So make sure you do that. So we're going to go in here. Uh, in co-op, it's... it's Easy, it's easy, and I'm going to give you a tip here as well uh, when you're in Afterlife to extend your time in Afterlife. So have one player go into Afterlife at the top of that area and have another player standing by to revive that player. And what you're going to do while that player is in the Afterlife at his body where you're reviving him, just hold revive and then let go when you're about halfway or three quarters of the way to the full revive and then just keep doing it. Keep doing it like we're doing it here. And... They can stay in the afterlife a long time and more than enough time to set the four numbers that we're going to set here. If you don't do this, you probably have to go into the afterlife at least twice. Okay, so you're going to go down to the number pad and you're going to enter these. It doesn't matter what order you enter them in, but here are the four numbers. You're going to have 872 and when you enter the numbers, they actually reconfigure to 728. Then you're going to do 101, which becomes 011, 386 becomes 863 and 481 which becomes 814 and you'll get a definite notification that you've completed this uh, after you enter those four numbers so what you end up unlocking are a set of audio logs and the first one plays automatically and the rest lead you up to the roof of the prison and they're indicated by drops. They're, they look like drops, only they're headphones, and they won't disappear. They'll stay there, and they pop up one at a time, so you have to listen to them in order. And you just make your way up to the infirmary, and then up to the roof, and then you get the last of the audio logs. All right, so the last thing, the last step we have to do here is to go into Afterlife. Now, all four of us, all four of our players went into the Afterlife and went up to the airplane. And this part could be glitched. The first time we got to this point, uh, it glitched us out. We, we actually activated what we were supposed to activate to get on the plane while we're in Afterlife. So you're going to go up to the plane while you're in Afterlife and hit your X button. Even though you don't get an indication to say, you know, hit X to board the plane, um, you still do it, and it should ship you onto the plane while you're in Afterlife. And the, the thing, the, the way you'll know that you're ready to do that is that your meter, your Afterlife meter does not count down. You're no longer counting down. You're in the Afterlife. If you go back down to where you went into Afterlife, your body is no longer even there. You're stuck in Afterlife. That's it. There's there's no nothing you can do from this point on uh, except you know interact with the Afterlife stuff around the map or get on the plane. Um, now, it's not entirely clear. You, you don't necessarily need all four players. I don't believe, I can't verify that because I haven't completed it that way, uh, that all four players need to be in the afterlife. Uh, it is possible, I think, that you can do it with only one player as long as that one player is the one that activates, uh, goes to the back of the plane and hits X to get in the plane and take off. So then what happens, you're going to take off and you're going to go over to the Golden Gate Bridge, you're going to fall down and you'll see your characters... Uh, sitting in the electric chairs and they're dead they they've been moved from wherever you went into the afterlife to the electric chairs and you can revive them and they'll get up from the electric chairs you may have a brutus or two or three spawn in depending on uh, how many times you've been to the bridge or uh, and or what round you're on you can kill them but the goal here is it's ba basically the the three players versus weasel weasel's the odd guy out and if you really listen to the story um with the the audio logs and i'll put those uh, links to those uh, videos with the audio uh, in the description but if you listen to it the three conspired against the weasel and killed them and those three players were put in electric chairs and executed so you're replaying it out on the bridge it's weasel versus the other three characters and it doesn't matter who dies I mean if the three the three kill weasel or weasel kills the other the other three the game still ends you might get a, a, a different message on the ending but it ends nonetheless and you get the achievement pop goes the weasel and that is the achievement slash easter egg for a mob of the dead hope you guys enjoyed a couple things i want to note that uh, came up in some comments in reference to us completing the uh the easter egg uh number one is that people 
have been complaining that they haven't seen the blue skulls, and it may be that they're playing offline, so I'm not sure if there is an issue with the skulls being offline, but you won't see them until you've gone to the Golden Gate Bridge at least once. However, I do I have confirmed in single player that I have collected the blue skulls before I even went to the uh, Golden Gate Bridge for the first time. Uh, one of the other things was that uh, perhaps you required to have the, the Blunder Gat upgraded to the Acid Gat and then upgraded in the Pack-a-Punch to the, uh, the Vitriolic Withering. I don't think that's the case. I was able to progress in solo with just the Blunder Gat up to the point where I could activate the plane. And I think it's just because I was in solo that I couldn't because I then I did go ahead and I... I Upgraded to the acid gat and I upgraded to the the withering or vitriolic withering and it still didn't work um, So I think as long as you've got those uh, those audio logs coming in after you set the numbers or even the numbers themselves uh, Fluttering like they do as explained in this video I think you're good to go for the rest of the Easter egg and just hopefully it doesn't glitch if it glitches out on you You're gonna try and get on the plane the plane's gonna take off without you and then you'll hear some music It'll reset it'll look like you know, you're supposed to be on the plane, and there's nothing you can do. You have to exit the game and start again, and that's what we ended up doing last night. So hopefully that doesn't happen to you guys. And that's it. If uh, there are any other things that or items that come up that uh, may or may not be required, I think we've covered everything, then we'll add to the description as well as video annotation if and when we can confirm. Hope you enjoyed the guide. I'm Spider, and I'm out.